many of the witnesses have risked their own freedom speaking out on these issues against Putin, and we know that can be dangerous, so we thank you for your courage and for coming here to inform us of your thoughts and your experiences. Uh, Mr. Putin and his oligarchs work together to help fund this war machine, and with his enablers, they steal and oppress from the Russian people. The Russian people, all of the monies they have came from the Russian people. That should be wealth to the, to the people. Uh, it's unbelievable what happened. Communism, bad, but they did had the idea of giving money to people who needed it. And now the, the subsequent uh, Russian world is taking it and keeping it for a few. Uh, just the opposite. Mr. Browder, you were instrumental in the creation of the Magnitsky Act, and, and that uh, Mr. Cardin championed that, and I thank you for that, signed into law in 2012. As Putin's illegal war on, in Ukraine drags on, Russian oligarchs have been the forefront of our national attention. They, many have been sanctioned, but they don't have that much influence anymore. Still, they should be sanctioned. They're a critical component of the regime, and they often run Russian state-owned and state-influenced companies, positions they gain, of course, through corruption and through uh, having... Putin hand them that money. In exchange for the lavish lifestyles that they live, these oligarchs pledge their loyalty to the mid-level KGB agent who rose to be, uh, was, as a graduate, became the uh, president, prime minister, president now again, currently overseeing Europe's biggest land war since 1945. They turn the other way as Russian armies continue to commit heinous war crimes against citizens of Ukraine, the extent of which we're just beginning to see. Oligarchs maintain their wealth with the help of enablers, it's been mentioned, lawyers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, along with many of my colleagues here, co-sponsored the Enablers Act, which would finally force those professionals that helped them to ask basic questions about the source of the funds for suspicious clients. In this unprecedented time of war, the U.S. and our allies have sanctioned many individuals close to Putin, making it harder for them to access their wealth. But we must continue to keep the pressure on. Um, President Biden has unified our allies and led the way with unprecedented crippling economic sanctions and significant military and defensive aid but not enough defensive aid and military aid. We need to give the Ukrainians everything, because if they don't win, we all lose, and it sets the way for the rest of Europe to fall. It's no different than the Sudetenland. We're experiencing it now, and we need to recognize that fact. Uh, at the end of the last year, it was published by the administration, our strategy on countering corruption, and they have won, and last month the Department of Justice launched a Russian oligarch task force, a klepto capture, which works to identify sanctions, evasion, and related criminal conduct. Fine and good. The Helsinki Commission and the Counter Kleptocracy Caucus have been working hard in this space as well. And I need to recognize Paul Massaro on our staff. He brought kleptocracy to my attention. It's how I got involved. He's been a great leader on this. He's been fantastic. And in fact, the first meeting we had, like a little reception to kind of launch the Kleptocracy Caucus, was in a building on Pennsylvania Avenue overlooking Trump Tower. How prophetic. <laughs> I, introduced an, I introduced an omnibus package, the Counter Kleptocracy Act, along with Ranking Member Wilson, which includes six bills which would address and punish Putin's corrupt system and regime. The rest of what I've got here, I think other people have said or will say, and I'll allow them to say it. I look forward to your testimony of the expert witnesses and for your continued courage and for standing there with us today. Yield back the balance of my time. Uh, 